Hello, I'm Aileen McCormick. I am the visual art curator at the Royal Overseas League, an organisation that supported the arts for over 70 years. Um, so I am here to share an art talk with Dimple Bisha. So Dimple was one of our Rosal International Residency Artists in 2019. Uh, she's from Bangalore. She's a multidisciplinary artist. Uh, so she works across all different genres and to create a visual language. Um, she focuses a lot on alchemy, so it's very appropriate in this current climate that she'd be talking to us about her work. Um, so what we've done is we've pre-recorded a conversation. Um, so the joys of technology, you may have seen our Rosal at Home work, we get to share a lot of artwork from all around the world, people doing concerts in their home, people doing drawing classes from home. It's great, but it's not always the most reliable. So we did a pre-record and you might see a bit of a delay, but what we're going to do is we're going to play that. You'll also find that you can type in questions. So feel free to type in questions and I can look at these at the end. Dimple's here with us. So what we'll do is we'll pose the questions to her so she can then reply and have a bit of a conversation. And um, there's still a few more attendees joining in. So, you know, feel free to type in at any point. Um, we're also going to be joined by some people from the Art House up in Wakefield, which is who we work with, our partner organisation for our international residencies. So with the Art House, we host a two month residency for two artists every year. Unfortunately, this year has been postponed for next year, which is understandable under the circumstances. But um, we do this so that we can bring artists from all over the Commonwealth together. That's the founding principle of Rosal. Um, so I won't take up too much more of your time and um, I'll get the video playing so then we can get to know Dimple's work and get some questions thought up to post to her. Um, but thank you all for joining us and um, yeah, enjoy. So hello Dimple. Hello. Um, so where are you right now? I'm in Bangalore. Uh, it's a southern part of India. It's in Karnataka state. So Bangalore is a metropolitan city and uh, it's also cosmopolitan. So we come under red zone actually because it's a cosmopolitan city. And are you in lockdown? What is the situation in the city? Yeah, we are in lockdown right now. Uh, so after 2017, I think uh, the Prime Minister will announce whether we are continuing lockdown. Uh, but yeah, some leisure is there, like, you know, seven to seven, the people can move around. Uh, but not much, not, there is no public transportation uh, for local, but yeah, the, they are trying to transfer uh, uh, laborers, they want to go their home, uh, mm. leaving the city because there is no job for them and there is no food, so they want to go back to the villages, so the, the government has started few trains from today. Mm. And uh, they'll be sending back them, so it's not like in thousand, it's in lakhs. Yeah, they yeah. are moving all around, and yeah. yeah, it's a bit chaotic situation in India. Well, loads of people have been affected by this outbreak, um, and I know that you spend a lot of time traveling for residencies and yes. exhibitions all over the world. So, how have your plans have to change over the past, like the next? Year? I'm not sure. Uh, this year, I had to go to Quebec for a performance art festival in September. And um, I don't know what will happen in future because uh, whether they'll cancel the festival, uh, it, it depends on the situation, you know, how the, how the world is uh, coping with COVID and how the, how we, whether we'll be given visas or whether we can travel, it all depends. So right now I, it's very uncertain for us. You've been doing lots online. You've been doing lots of sort of video performances. I know you shared some of those with me earlier um, and then you've also been doing lots of work at home so what are you working on right now? So uh, presently uh, there are like two three uh, subjects which are very closely I'm working with one is the alchemy which is always I've been working with so right now I'm working with the botanical plants I've been doing botanical studies and uh, uh, I've been painting it with watercolors and uh, and also painting surrealistic images of myself where my body and botanics 
mix together and it becomes a surrealistic uh, form and they have come out with a canvas and uh, and also performance pieces which are very much related to present um, uh, lockdown period you know our reaction and our emotional and psychological state which i'm trying to express through my performance because performance is something which we do spontaneously and i cannot uh, erase uh, that part where we are getting affected with this covid 19 and you know uh, mm -hmm. there is a lot of uh, fear there is a lot of uh, uh, psychological tension there is a lo lot of things uncertainty and then as an artist how will you survive uh, without selling your things and uh, what will be in future sure. and yeah and a lot of plans have been cancelled had to go to college like uh, um, university for as a for an kind of an official work and that has been cancelled and uh, so there are a lot of uncertainty what will be in our future you know as an artist mm -hmm. as a human and um, and there is a lot of unemployment and i was thinking to apply some some places but now it's so uncertain that you can't even think of applying anywhere you know yeah. so it's like you have to just survive what you have and uh, your savings yeah, <laughs> so, yeah. you're not <laughs> alone in that feeling lots of the artists i've spoken to are it's a worrying time it's a really worrying time so it's great that we can come and have a chat and share your work with people um, yeah. just to do something to stay proactive and productive and you've been so productive if anyone has seen Dimple's work on Instagram and you're always busy, you're always doing something. One of the most productive people I know, actually. Um, and it's fantastic. Can you show us some of the stuff you've been working on? Yeah, so uh, I've been working with uh, some of the paintings, which I can show you. Like I can uh, take my... Oh, fantastic. Uh, so they are like some canvases, uh, the circular form, which are new. And also some of them are like uh, botanical drawings, which I've started. Uh, so there are like few more. And then there are some canvases, which I developed it. And then there is also some uh, woodcut. I can show you some woodcut going on. It's a huge one, so it will take time. Oh my gosh, yeah, that's huge. Yeah, so it just started with a small uh, workout, like, you know, from bottom. Mm. So yeah i hope uh, yeah i'll show you small woodcuts which are already there with me i can show it in a screen so yeah there are like small uh, this one is a leaf so again i i hope it's clear there yeah yeah i can see that yeah so it's uh, it's have to take a print it's just carved right now so i have to take a print and then there is a uh, a plant again one more plant which i've cowed it <laughs> these are beautiful and i'm excited to see the prints that come from them as well because yeah, the joy of wood cut is so and various will be kind of uh, multiples of yeah that. and yeah, these are like uh, old woodcut works that's lovely so, that's really nice yeah and actually and, well, like this you know the whole idea of health and healing like that plays into your work already because you already work with sort of alchemy and that exploration of how materials affect the body yes. so this whole pandemic and everything that's breaking out i can imagine that that is a lot of fuel for your work i suppose yes uh, i've been reacting more uh, because this is little slower process woodcut because uh, painting i feel it's a little more spontaneous where you uh, take out your spontaneous uh, emotions. But Utkat is little processed work, so you pre-plan it. So then the emotion becomes a little lesser in this kind of works. But yeah, performance, I feel it's more intimate for me because I come out with uh, deep emotion and uh, uh, kind of body movement also. So I feel it's more spontaneous there. And I do come out, the, there are like five performances till now I've done. And all were based on this uh, uh, kind of coronavirus uh, reaction to it, you know, how you feel when you are quarantined. So the first performance which I did for Equinox to Equinox, same difference. Uh, it's a performance group based in Belfast. And uh, they asked us to do a performance in home quarantine situation. 
so i created my own uh, setup like in backdrop with curtain red curtain and you know bowl of uh, red water and uh, working out with candle uh, um, melting the candle in the water and they fall on the water and they float and like it's like you know appearing of something coronavirus you know that's how you discover it like you know it's like a mirror uh, mirror work like it's a mirror you know uh, what water is kind of reflection so uh, when you drop a candle uh, candle light uh, candle light uh, drop on the water you get this uh, kind of images of coronavirus you know and uh, that that's my kind of like how you uh, name it like appearance of dark matter it's something which is unknown but i'm making it visible through my work uh, yeah. I, yeah so it's it's invisible enemy but uh, how you see it i'm trying to make it visible through candle uh, drops so yeah. and uh, then i was wearing a mask with needles and that is little very uncomfortable we have seen uh, people wearing mask in especially in china and you know some eastern countries always but we never had to wear a mask no. any time you know in no India. we were the same in the uk we were very it's it's still quite when i go to the supermarket and i see lots of people with the masks on it is still it's it's yeah. unsettling it's not something we're not used to yeah so uh, so it's a little uh, i made it a little dramatic with the needles like it is like you know and also protect myself from the, the needles were you know protruding outside so it mm. is like you know attacking the whatever is coming to us mm. uh, so that's how and then i also used dolls uh, in my work uh, so the dolls were basically we have become like in dolls we have been controlled by the whole situation we we don't we are like a muted dolls you know kind of uh, uh, and we are totally helpless with this kind of situation so that's why metaphorically i use that then second performance was i created a laboratory mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, obviously i borrowed uh, the title from our previous show which we did it with you guys yes. uh, laboratory for survival uh, thanks to sunil shah who has given this title and i reworked on that and then uh, i created a laboratory where uh, i'm trying to find out the virus mm -hmm. as a vir virologist you know like trying to discover where it is and then i make a maquette of uh, uh, coronavirus with the paper newspaper and a matchstick and mm -hmm. hang it and then uh, my reaction goes on with that and it's more of psychological uh, play where i'm blowing this uh, hand gloves and trying to take in oxygen from it and mm -hmm. trying to fight that suffocation you know which mm -hmm. is being created for us so uh, and then again i take a tour in the in my uh, terrace where mm -hmm. i've been totally wrapped with silver foil and silver foil is basically to protect food and you know we use mm -hmm. it to protect food but then uh, it uh, it acts as a paradoxical act because uh, you cannot preserve a living thing when you wrap mm -hmm. yourself you cannot even breathe <laughs> you True. feel suffocated you know so that that is a contradictory thing uh, mm -hmm. which i wanted to bring you know how long you wrap yourself how long you know because we are meant to be free we are meant to be you know uh, breathe in a open air and not like wrap with something you know protected uh, layer and so it's uh, it, it is like a metaphor i used and then uh, one more performance was uh, we have been seeing lot of videos of animals freely moving around in city you know like yeah. loads and loads of and i used to enjoy them and i wanted to bring it in my work because i work with nature and things like that so i created one more work which is titled a laboratory of coexistence how you can coexist with all these living beings you know so mm -hmm. i have quite a collection of toys also of uh, animals so i made a setup in my table and then i was talking to them <laughs> nice. but, yeah so uh, it's like giving an instruction and then uh, uh, at one point i'm trying to uh, take away my own identity cover it with the cloth and then uh, merge with nature 
so that's that's what because as a human we have been always dominating nature and the whole living beings you know so what we need to do is we have to work out reverse we have to go you know we don't need to dominate we have to coexist with them so that's the kind of balance we have to find and that was the message in that work and yeah so i've been like doing 30 seconds video also for one more project and it was now and everywhere and things like that so it it is talking present so it was uh, it was quite difficult for me to bring my video for 30 seconds and what will be that 30 second will be so mm. it, it was um, it was like a setup which i created with animals and a plant and a laboratory and myself <laughs> and uh, i'm trying to see all around it's it's just a simple video so that was one more work which i did so these are like spontaneous uh, uh, reactions to whatever is coming to my mind and psychologically what i am feeling like you know uh, i need to speak out and things like that so these are the few projects which i did with performance and apart from that the slow process is my painting and portrait I like I like the different sort of reaction times that you get with the different media. I'm like obviously performance is very instant sort of this is what's on the news today. This is how I feel about it. This is how I'm sharing my emotions with it and expressing it and and then the painting maybe takes a little bit longer and then the woodcut as you said is a really like slow meditative process. Uh you know it's not i like the different levels of it that you can kind of go into one and another depending on what you want to say yes uh because we are not in the same state all the time you know sometimes you are very uh, spontaneous emotive and things like that and sometimes you need to calm down and when you calm down uh, you need to be more meditative uh, mode you know kind of so the meditative mode comes with painting which is little you know smoothing you know and you you can work and uh, even woodcut i feel because you have to calm yourself if you are agitated you cannot do woodcut mm -hmm. i'll tell you yeah. because you need to calm down and you have to carve each line and you have to concentrate there so yeah. i feel print making is more of a concentration and meditative so uh, when i want to do meditative work then i work with this mediums like you know painting and woodcut so it calms me down and you know i'm more uh, peaceful with myself and sometimes uh, you need to kind of uh, speak out you need to express yourself then i take a performative mode where you know where i won't, I, i don't plan anything all these performances i know like i'll use this elements i'll use this props i'll i do all set up but i don't know what actions will be so it's not pre planned it's not pre planned you know you cannot work out it never if i work out it won't come out <laughs> so yeah. it's more natural for me it's more natural and more spontaneous so i i like that uh, way of expressing it yeah. so something and it helps us to bring out our subconscious fears and uh, tensions and emotions so yeah yeah cuz if you overthink it then it becomes a sort of more theatrical it comes rehearsed it becomes whereas the performances and I and I know that you quite traditionally interact with an audience so there is yes. that element of spontaneity there but obviously without the audience you still need that spontaneity and that probably comes without the planning and just having to sort of work to a camera must be quite a challenge yeah i have a friend uh, just next door i asked her to come and document my work mm -hmm. and she really she gets confused because she doesn't know what i'm going to do next oh, that must be yeah. a challenge to be the yeah, camera person it's a challenge for her and yeah. also me because then uh, sometimes you know uh, you have express and she is not documented it like you know because yeah. like, she is focusing on something else on the object which is there and so yeah but then it works out uh, after maybe one or two take i think it she gets an idea like okay i need to take this angle or this angle and then again the expression change because it's again a spontaneous <laughs> oh the challenges of live performance even when it's recorded it's still a challenge yes <laughs> it's great and it's it's amazing that you've still got the platform to share everything on cuz i know that you did the 30 works in 30 days as well 
yes, um, I did. to the 120 Collective. Um, can you tell us a bit more about what you did with them? Yeah, it was, uh, I thought I can just do one drawing a day and submit it. But then every day, every day there was a challenge. They had a question and I had to find out something, you know, suitable for that. And then I had to rework on what, what I had planned and, you know, according to their question, you had to be kind of uh, deal with it. So there, there was like extra work which was going on. So every day I used to spend two, three hours just after I see the question and then I used to rework things and do drawing accordingly and then submit it. So it yeah. was like within, uh, within uh, day end of the day you have to submit, otherwise you are out of the game. Yeah. <laughs> so that was a challenge, yeah. real a challenge because for me it, uh, working under some kind of deadline was too much at one point because I was doing all this simultaneous project of performance and paintings and things like that and then there were few more painting projects which also um, mm -hmm. I participated along with this one because um, uh, like in Bangalore we have an organization who has been support who has supported like 200 artists in Bangalore That's in their uh, starting stage of their mm -hmm. career and they asked like for an online exhibition any work you have produced. So I have to give a new set of works which is already not online. You know? oh. so then, yeah, so then I created this uh, three canvases which are here. Uh, and they are like, uh, uh, you can see the bitter god and then ginger yeah. and uh, there is a stone head. Oh, so, yeah. okay. <laughs> so they are like, I'll, I'll bring it here maybe, it's better. So, So it's a uh, imaginary. Go up a bit. There we go. I can see it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. there is very small of my me, and then there is a big bitter god. Oh, wonderful. So it's it's like uh, because I've been also doing cooking all the time mm -hmm. and taking care of my mom, and uh, so when you're cooking all the time then you think of all this vegetables and their uses and how it can benefit you. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, <laughs> and I don't know if it's the same with you as well. We had like massive sort of surges of everyone going and buying all the food in the supermarket and there was a lack of sort of food available for a minute. And um, so it did give you this whole new appreciation of just how valuable this food is when you couldn't yeah. create it. If, luckily for us, uh, I never went to supermarket, although there is a supermarket was open, but I didn't want to take that uh, risk of going in supermarket. But we do get on our roads, uh, vegetable vendors. Uh, they bring the vegetables uh, and then you just go down and buy your vegetables and come up. That's <laughs> so it's perfect. Yeah, That's so, so and they are fresh. Every day you can buy new vegetable and that's can cook it so that was uh, quite advantageous uh, but uh, at one point it also became a kind of a tension for us because uh, not bang not in bangalore but in some other city in india uh, a lot of people got affected with this vegetable vendors mm. so uh, you know yeah. uh, they infected a lot of people so yeah. but in, in bangalore it was quite safe and i'm in a green zone if, mm -hmm. although the bangalore is considered red zone but I am in an area where it is a green zone, so it's not to worry much. But then also, the everyday rituals go on. I clean everything yeah. because I have to protect my mom. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, uh, the, the, these are regular rituals, you know, cooking and cleaning and mm -hmm. um, taking care of whatever you, I'm bringing. I don't bring it inside. I wash outside and then I bring vegetables yeah. and things like that. So. These are like situation. No, it's, it is. It's weird how much has changed, but also how much it is just like normal life in a way, like just the routine of cooking and and mm. the nice thing of spending more time with family and when you're at home with family, if you're if you're lucky enough to be able to do that, and it's just this whole new appreciation of just that routine. Um, yeah. Yeah, so what does your mom think about you doing all the work around the house? Yeah, she is uh, really happy and uh, she has become a partial artist herself. 
she is started yeah she has started painting from past 3 years and she has been doing quite a lot of paintings and uh, yeah she is working on right now <laughs> maybe i'll show that yeah show mary and a child <laughs> okay go oh, check your mama very talented <laughs> yeah she is like uh, because you know for her, her she cannot do much of physical activities mm -hmm. she is uh, she walks with the walker so mm -hmm. she sits in one place so this is the best thing she can do i can give her uh, paper colors and she can sit in one place and do and play with that you know so and it's nice cuz then you get yeah. something it's not like sitting watching television or you know you have something at the end of it that you can enjoy and it's it's a calming process you know it's yes and she does it with great dedication and yeah. she enjoys it a lot and sometimes she you can see her expression when she is doing she is laughing at her own drawing like she makes really? funny expression so i i think she likes it so uh, in a way she, i made her to think and uh, do her work you know and oh, that's enjoy brilliant. creative process so we both yeah. don't watch television much except mm. Uh, for an half an hour seeing the headlines of a news what's yeah. happening around and that's it so yeah. uh, and uh, we don't watch much movies and things like that so most of the time goes uh, doing creative work <laughs> that's brilliant it's so nice that you can do that together as well i know it's such a nice thing to share and spend time doing and um, i want to ask you a little bit more about the circular canvases that yeah. you've been doing um because that's that's a new undertaking yes i will bring it to the screen it's much better so this is one more it's a ginger head i love that it's so wonderfully surreal yeah so uh, this one is a ginger and this is a kind of a mushroom but it can be also a tree so the watercolor yeah yeah no no they are acrylic color they acrylic as yeah they look so vibrant yeah so so this is a kind of an element from nature and uh, yeah sort is, of the body returning uh, to nature yeah and this one is like uh, one of the most expensive uh, mushroom in the world oh. uh, you find it in uh, himalayan region so one of the artists he just happened to share an image of this and then i was like oh wow mushroom head it looks <laughs> and, amazing yeah and this is kind of a broccoli a different type of broccoli which i found it online we don't get this so no. but it's very flowery and uh, that's why i liked it and it was very challenging to make this yeah because uh, uh, this needed a lot of time you know 3 4 days to fill it out and it was very oh, challenging for brilliant. me so i just love the way that all the different elements like no matter what medium you're working on it all ties into the sort of idea of the body and nature and the connection and how the body relies on nature and how the body is nature like we are nature yeah. even we sometimes yeah. think of us as distant we are still part so of i'm trying yeah i'm trying to uh, merge the line there is no difference actually how body becomes nature and nature becomes body you know yeah and, uh, and finally we become one you know like uh, that's the whole idea uh, yeah. right now we are taking we are getting nourished from nature mm -hmm. we are having food from nature and things like that but at one point we'll also merge with it so yeah. that's that's the whole idea of uh, but physically also how i can juxtapose along with nature that's the whole idea in painting also so mm -hmm. i i like you know and how it uh, embodies my mind you know kind of how it um, overtakes my mind even that uh, you know protruding uh, bitter gourd it's like mm -hmm. it's become bigger than my body yeah. so it's like you know how it overtakes your body you know kind of mm -hmm. how and then i'm not only just talking about the form and color and things like that mm -hmm. it's when you see that you have to feel that taste of a vegetable so yeah. in one more, in one more painting i like you know uh, how you can enjoy ginger <laughs> ginger head again i know uh, the body is so small at the bottom move it up a little bit 
fantastic. Yeah. So, uh, so uh, how the taste overtakes your, you know, when you merge yourself in, in, um, in kind of understanding the taste of that mm -hmm. particular element, how it overtakes your yourself. You yeah. Know? You like is so strong. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> and when you're strong. tasting it and when you enjoying it, you become full of it, you know. And yeah. then so that's what I'm trying to do with my painting also. That's why it's taking a bigger form than mine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and it is and it's part of the healing as well. Ginger is, you know, used for healing and yeah, you know, wellness. So it ties in with with all that. Yeah. Yeah, most most of the vegetables which I have picked up are having an alchemical property of mm. uh, medicinal property actually. Yeah. So uh bitter gourd is uh, actually in ayurveda and also in generally uh, in india they suggest for diabetes so when you have a, a bitter gourd juice in early morning in empty stomach uh, mm -hmm. it will balance your sugar level oh that's good yeah so that's that. that's having a medicinal value yeah and, uh, ginger is also good for fever and things like that mm -hmm. and uh, so true so there are a lot of elements which has a medicinal value. I've taken those things yeah. as a study material. So that's yeah. how I've been working and uh, uh, I'm interested in kind of uh, nature elements. Yeah, I think and, and as well that practice that is so prevalent at the moment, obviously with nature getting a little bit of a break from the pollution that we normally inflict upon it and you know, there's been, as you said, sightings of animals where they've never been seen before. There was dolphins in Venice. There was, it's just amazing the way that, yeah. you know, life goes on in a way. And they, with or without us, nature will survive. And I, I was listening yeah. to, to something so, about, like, would nature miss us if we, if we suddenly stopped? Would they miss us? Like, would everything else? But it is the idea that we are nature as well and we need to survive and using these sort of tools, these medicinal um, vegetables and roots and um, as a way that we can survive through your work. Mm. Yeah, mm. so uh, we need to balance everything. It's my I, whole idea is like, although humans are like super, uh, super animal compared to others, like who mm. have brains and you know, but uh, we are overtaking everything. We are overtaking land, we are overtaking water, we are taking taking over you know uh, their spaces animal spaces and things like that and uh, what not you know now a lot of new inventions which are not healthy like 5g is coming and there are a lot of negative points of 5g uh, network and you know, we, a lot of animals are getting affected and one point we saw disappearing pigeons in bangalore because mm -hmm. of this uh, towers uh, which came up you know the um, the big towers and most of the pigeons were disappeared and suddenly after a few years now they are appearing again but mm -hmm. i don't see it in a regular space like in just outside if i go i don't see pigeons now but mm -hmm. only in few areas i've seen them in airport and mm -hmm. maybe some spaces but we don't see pigeons now so mm -hmm. what why this uh, this animals and birds are getting disappeared because they are not able to cope up with our development Mm -hmm. you know uh, it's like we have to think about other living beings also when we are developing it so yeah. I, I i feel that the coexistence thing needs to be rethought about like yeah. how we can coexist and we don't uh, take over their space and uh, just dominate everything yeah no i think and it's um and as well you've been saying you mentioned that you saw the broccoli online and our um, and the mushroom online as well so you've been staying connected a lot through the internet and um, with yeah. different artists and is it like on your website and on what uh, whatsapp instagram yes uh i've been doing a research on botanical uh, plants which has a healing thing so it's a it's an ongoing research so one part is doing a research on plants and uh, herbs and things like that which has a bit medicinal and learning about it uh, mm -hmm. even in uh, both um, in uh, indian perspective in indian um, ayurvedic uh, medicinal thing and also uh, any other source where we can learn about the plants and uh, roots so this is like one more section which i do like 
somehow make time to do that research so there is like piles of files which are like compiling my computer uh, <laughs> about alchemy and then plants and flowers which has a kind of healing property uh, vegetables which has a healing property and the roots which has a healing property so there is like loads of files which are been i mean compiling and reading about so this is like uh, i feel uh, my work comes with a lot of uh, process of learning and understanding things uh, it comes out of a lot of research also because uh, you just you cannot just put your own uh, ideas like you know just mm -hmm. roughly uh, this is like real real research where you need to find out some answer uh, which is which is ha which has some consistency in real life also mm -hmm. it's not uh, like you know illusion and things like that Yeah. So something which which has its consistency in reality. So mm -hmm. I'm trying to do a kind of an um, study, which uh, thorough study of this uh, alchemical plants and uh, uh, plants and minerals, and also uh, botanical values and things like that. So mm -hmm. uh, this has been like a real uh, interest for me to develop. And so right now, have you got any projects lined up for the future? right now uh, i'm actually i'm working towards uh, to have a show in future i don't know when the dates will arrive mm -hmm. but you know i can i don't have a magic stick it it is a slow process for me i take a lot of time to prepare my work so i'm working towards making a whole set of watercolor uh, botanical study and uh, prints based on botanical study uh, so that is my present uh, kind of uh, um, area of concentration mm -hmm. and uh, yeah this i think performance project keeps on coming up uh, and yeah the future projects i'm also working for one more art gallery which asked for again a performance piece for their show uh, which might come in come up in june so mm -hmm. after this whole interview session is over then i'll concentrate with my props what i have in my yeah. house for doing performances uh, so Yeah, I'm looking forward. I'm working out what I can bring for next yeah. project. It's quite interesting, like even just the way you've managed to react and adapt your practice. So yeah, as you said, using the things around the house, adapting, yeah. doing more video works than maybe you would have normally done before. Um, yeah, it's amazing how you've managed to sort of, I don't want to say evolve, but yeah, adapt your practice to suit the situation. Yeah, it is also advantages as an artist because I do a lot of collection of uh, mm -hmm. materials. So I like my house is full of. I I don't say it's a house of a normal person because everywhere you will see an art piece, <laughs> some collection, and then then I work out like wow, no, what I'll work with this kind of sets of uh, collection, you know. So I had one full set of laboratory materials with me, glass jars and things like that. I worked out with that. Then I had the toys with me. Then I have this dolls with me. So then, uh, and as a performance artist, I do pick up a lot of materials. So I have a lot of materials, and uh, so uh, that's why in one of the artists they asked, they said that I think you should do a collection of your uh, um, uh, props and costumes as one show, you know. Rather than <laughs> yeah, so because that would be a big show. I've seen how many costumes you've got. That would be a big show. Yeah, so for me, I usually prepare a new costume for new performance. But now I can't. But whatever I source, I have. I use it. You know, so I maybe reuse it in my one more mm. work or something because right now there is no option. So, but yeah, yeah because I have this uh, kind of collection, I use. It. Well, I'm excited to see what you've got coming up. Um, and yeah, I think we're kind of yeah. Thank you for chatting thank to me. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Um, for can you see me? You can see me. That's good. Um, and let me just get Dimple up as well. The joys of working with. Oh, there she is. Hello, Dimple. Thank you so much. I can't quite hear you just yet, um, but I'm also going to bring in some people from the art house. So Jen from the art house, I think you can join in the audio as well. Ah, uh, yes. Hello. 
Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> so, um, so Jen is from the Art House in Wakefield. So as I mentioned, um, we partner with the Art House to do our residencies. So I'd like to invite Jen to maybe ask them a few questions off the back of that video. Yes, happily. Hi everybody uh, that's watching at home. Um, yes, as Ailey mentioned, uh, I'm Jen, I'm the Marketing Comms Director here for the Art House. I'm actually in the Art House, uh, which is an unusual change. I've been working from home for the past few weeks, so it's lovely to be here uh, and to be remembering Dimple's show uh, last year with us and the time that she spent with us. Um, that was an amazing interview. Thank you so much, both of you, for your for your time putting that together. Um, I have lots of questions, and I have a few questions on behalf of some colleagues as well. But one of the things that I was most interested to explore was um, your daily process. Obviously, our daily routines have changed so much um, over the last, well, many of us, it's changed over the last few months. So I wondered if you follow a very rigorous and specific daily routine, if that's changed much over the last few weeks or, you know, what it is that helps you to continue to be so creatively productive, really, Dimple? Uh, for me, it's not changed much uh, since I'm working from home all the time. So it's like uh, uh, recently I saw on, uh, one uh, poster where artist is working all the time in the studio. So it's the same situation for me. But yeah, uh, since uh, like half half the day, uh, half of my day goes for um, doing domestic work like cleaning and cooking and things like that. So after two, I'm usually free, and then start. Uh, then I relax a bit uh, because mentally I need to come out of this domestic thing and then uh, focus on my work and then yeah the, by evening I'm like going to my terrace seeing sunset uh, having my tea <laughs> and then yeah the whole process starts so uh, I usually work in night I work uh, and it's more calmer for me and uh, then uh, as per the project I work with it so uh, and that one 30 days project challenge, which I did. So uh, after two, I used to work for that. So uh, I didn't have much uh, time for rest, but yeah, all the time I'm working. <laughs> so there are like several projects which were simultaneously going on. So uh, I used to shift my thinking process as per the projects I, I had to concentrate and then I used to balance it. So it's, it, 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 it's been very busy time for an artist. All the time, you know, people are uh, asking for an uh, interview and people are asking for work and people are, you know, so it's more busier than any other time, I feel. The lockdown period has been <laughs> more busier than any other time. That's amazing. Um, I, so I, I, that's certainly been reflected with a lot of the artists that we work with here at the Art House as well, that um, it's felt like uh, the rest of the world has quietened down in a lot of ways and it's, it's allowed uh, creativity to kind of bubble to the surface and suddenly people are, are desperate for um, creative content and engagement, um, which I think is really interesting. That was also another question that I had. Um, obviously, performance is a huge part of what you do, although you're multidisciplinary. Um, and certainly over the course of, of the pandemic, we've seen uh, a lot of people uh, grabbing uh, technology like uh, TikTok uh, and Dub Smash and other things to, um, to start to, to do their own performances. Very different tonally to what you do. Um, but I think it's interesting that there seems to be an innate uh, impulse in, in people to want to, to perform, to respond uh, to, uh, to the world physically as well and, and to engage with one another in that way when we can't physically be close. We're still trying to put our bodies out there into the world. Uh, I just wondered what you thought about, about the sort of increase in, in that kind of performative behavior of people across the world really yeah it's a human tendency we you, humans are like a social animal you know we like to uh, have an interaction get together be with each other and not in isolation so it's a obvious tendency that we want to reach out and uh, yeah there has been like a lot of tiktoks and 
people being uh, like there is a whole lots of thing you know cooking contest kind of you know people are cooking every day and they're posting it in facebook and you know in instagram different recipes and then people have started adding me in cooking session and then it was it was too much like you know for me i can't be like All, all the sides you know like i cannot manage everything but yeah few for few mm-hmm. days i did that also you know cooking putting some recipes for my friends and then they have like questions how to do this how to do that and then i stopped doing that for a while because uh, then i had to do more creative process so mm-hmm. i feel it's um, it's a human psychology to reach out people it's a uh, uh, and uh, this isolation is created a uh, lot of kind of depression depressive uh, mode and um, i think a lot of fear also because it's so much uncertainty no? we don't know whether we'll come out in real sense and yesterday i was reading one more article of uh, a who scientist uh, saying that uh, the corona virus will never go mm-hmm. so it's like so much uncertainty in the situation although their people are scientists are trying to get a vaccination and things like that but we still don't know and uh, by then how many people will lose and uh, there will be one member in a family at least gone so there is a lot of uh, insecurity and people don't want to enter that zone of darkness you know so they are trying to divert it uh, subconsciously by doing all this creative stuff in a way it's, uh, they also keep it themselves positive mode uh, uh, i think at for some time it will still go on but it won't go on for longer time they'll mm-hmm. also get exhausted with all this thing and then they'll come to the reality in terms of reality so but i think it's okay this phase has this kind of character and we have to accept it as it comes mm. absolutely uh i think i just had one more question um which was in relation to uh the use of humor in your work particularly i think that um uh it can be quite easy for performance work to um to feel very serious um and that it's not okay for people to laugh or smile or uh not all performance work of course but i think that's a a common misconception of it and your work as you know across the work that you do i think has a really interesting uh thread of humor or just through the elevation of of everyday items like vegetables like ginger through the uh the way that you uh work with scale so um the pieces that we saw in in the film interview small humans big ginger heads i think there's an innate sort of uh comedy uh in that sort of elevating everyday items to the sublime and and the, the way that you juxtapose those things together um do you feel like humor is something that you're um more conscious of at the moment with with the world being in such a sort of fragile state or depressed state uh, i don't think it's uh, maybe the audience sees it like in that way in a humor but i i'm trying to work in multiple dimension you know sometimes mm-hmm. we uh, we run away from the reality and then you know we try to create ourselves so small you know sometimes you really feel very small in front of something you know and then that's how that smaller form of myself comes and then the bigger form of something else and uh, how it how a particular essence or a taste dominates the body you know it over uh, over takes your mind so th- although it's um, in a way humorous uh, but then it's also surreal i feel it's more surreal than humorous i feel yeah. and then uh, I, and i try to bring various levels in that so sometimes i'm talking about multiple realities at one point it's uh, you cannot talk about like you know hold a um, kind of a bitter crowd and stand like you know it doesn't say anything but if i present it in a different way it might say something so it's an attempt to express my uh, emotions and feeling towards that particular thing so i try to place it in a different way and that's how my mind also works you know sometimes that Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jane. Um we don't have any questions at the moment on the chat, but I would like to ask you one question, Dimple, although I have asked you plenty in the film. 
But um, one more, just because obviously it seems like a lifetime ago that we had you over in the UK and you got to spend time up uh, with Jen in Wakefield. Mm -hmm. um, but just looking back um, at your residency, what, seven months ago now, um, what are your thoughts looking back at your time in the UK and the work you produced? What can you reflect on that? It was really a wonderful experience for me. Uh, one is like I was in a totally different space and environment and uh, it really allowed me to cut out from my everyday routine and jump to my own kind of uh, imaginary space of, you know, working for all the time or uh, doing painting and all the time doing drawing and studying and giving my time for research and performance and things like that. So it was wonderful. And also it, it gave me an opportunity to have an interaction with so many uh, artists and curators and uh, have a broader uh, understanding and dimension on that. And uh, of course, it, it was a wonderful experience in one more, one more way because um, I'd been to UK 10 years ago. Like I was in Glasgow Print Studio and it gave me an opportunity to meet my old friends at GPS and uh, yeah, uh, refresh my memory of Glasgow. I was there for nine months, so it is much longer than Wakefield, but it was amazing uh, to revisit the same places. I don't, I don't know whether I'll uh, visit again or not, you know, like. I don't know my, <laughs> but you know, it, it's it's good to go to the same spot and re re uh, experience the whole space in a different time. So it's like uh, you're walking the time, you know, you're walking time backwards and future also. So it's like you're placing yourself in present, past, and future, and it's amazing yeah. feeling. And thanks to you people, uh, Royalty and uh, yeah, Art House to give me this opportunity and uh, it's been like a learning and uh, amazing experience with my co-resident also Cole and uh, yeah, of course Sunil and then Simon and yeah, amazing people. Everybody at Art, Art House, I never felt, you know, home alone. I was like so freely moving in Art House, like all the time up, down exploring each and everything around Art House and yeah in Art House it was quite good to work with Print Studio there and uh, exploring cyanotypes and uh, yeah occupying what not everything upstairs studio my room and <laughs> yeah it was amazing thank you no oh. lovely having you I'm sure Jane can, can sort of reiterate that as well Absolutely. Hopefully we don't have to wait 10 years to see you again like Glasgow did. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Um, well, I don't think we've got any questions in the chat. We do have some nice comments, but no questions. Um, so thank you all for joining in. I think we could probably leave it there unless there's anything else. Oh, Ailey, I was just going to say it looked like there was a, a question in the Q&A from uh, oh, Diane. There, oh, yep, yeah, it's popped up. Oh, good um, yes. So Dan Owen, so this is our um, Director General of the Royal Overseas League. Um, so she says, hi Dimple, it was great to meet you in Manchester last year. You're such mm -hmm. a multifaceted creative practice. Where did you begin and which is your favorite process or medium? Yeah, the, I, I started my journey around 20 years ago and my the favorite medium is printmaking and performance art. So I, for me, uh, I never differentiate these mediums. For me, it's a process uh, and uh, some particular expression needs some particular uh, way of medium, you know. So I never differentiated uh, me as in, I like mostly printmaking and performance. So it, it gives me a uh, language to express my subconscious mind. So it gives, facilitates, uh, this medium facilitates me uh, to express myself. Hmm. Okay, I think that's. Let's check I hope I have answered. Uh... No, I think that's good. And um, yeah. I think, yeah, just notice that new little tab there. There's no more questions. <laughs> there is yeah. one more question. Yeah. Thank you. No? Um, no, I think it should be done. So, yeah. thank you so much, everybody, for attending this talk. Um, Jane, thank you so much for joining us um, from the Art House in Wakefield. It's been lovely to see you again. We've been emailing a lot, but it's nice to see you again. Um, and Dimple, of course, thank you for chatting to us before and again today. It's always nice to see you and get, feel a bit motivated that you've 
do so much. <laughs> do so much. Um, Thank you. So, yeah, it's brilliant to hear from you and that you're doing well. Um, and hope everybody stays well and keep in touch with everything that we're doing both at Roswell and VR Hubs as well. So thank you so much and we'll leave this chat there. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much everyone. Bye. Bye.